Arab Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. This is a prophetic segment of our broadcast. And one thing, just let me kind of make sure I make clear. When we say prophetic segment, that doesn't mean that I'm actually prophesying, but I'm sharing with you prophetic insights from God's prophets throughout His Word that is happening in modern times. So I just wanted to kind of clear that up just in case sometimes people think, well, you're prophesying. No, I'm just sharing with you what I'm seeing already. Uh, I want to take you to the book of Hosea, chapter 7 and chapter 8, because clearly the things that are happening yet again around the world, events that are transpiring, are fulfilling biblical prophecy. And these prophecies, in some cases in Hosea, have already been fulfilled, and yet part of it is only destined to be fulfilled in the very coming months and days ahead. Uh, could even be a year or so away or more. Uh, but I just I can't really give you a time frame, but I wanted to set some of the stage for you here so you can see what's going on. Let's begin with uh, Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Okay, he's cooked only on one side, so to speak there. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth it not. That's kind of interesting. Now, playing in the background here is President Obama, along with President Bush, former President Bush and former President Carter. And I think it's interesting when it speaks about the gray hair as upon him and he knoweth it not, because each one of these men, when they began their time in office there, were not gray-headed. But the gray hair becomes very quickly uh, before they even realize it. And, of course, the picture is a little bit older here. Obama is nearly snow white now, but he started off pretty, pretty black-headed originally. And the same with uh, President, former President uh, um, Bush here, as well as former uh, President there, Clinton, as well. So anyway, it says here, And the pride of Israel testified to his face, and they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all of this. Uh, the pride of Israel testifies to his face. That's interesting because, see, we're supposed to be a godly nation that stands for Israel, but Israel's even testifying to our face. See, Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. That's exactly the way it's happened. We see that the United States went in there and toppled the Egyptian government and now into Assyria to, again, topple another government, which is uh, President Bashar al-Assad. Now, Russia's there to protect Bashar al-Assad, and clearly, even today, Bashar al-Assad was saying that the U U United Kingdom joining in with the coalition of the United States there to bomb ISIS is an illegal uh, a group that is in his country and bombing his country without authorization. You got to remember now, Russia is there to take up for Basar al-Assad. So he's clearly setting the guidelines there. Who's the enemy? So Russia is well aware of that in the event a future conflict between uh, NATO and her allies against Russia and hers come out, which may very well happen. Now, let's look at more what it says here. This is why I'm kind of bringing these things all out. I want you to see it in line of biblical prophecy and what's going on here. All right, so he says here, verse 12, When they shall go, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. I thought that was interesting. Bring them down as the fowls of heaven. Well, what are they doing? They're doing an air campaign there against supposedly ISIS in the region. Well, God is going to bring them down as the fowls of heaven. Their planes, in other words, are going to come down out of the skies there. And notice what he says, as it has, uh, I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. Uh, and that is the American people. We have heard for years, even by people prophesying, judgment is coming to the land of America because why? They have turned against Israel. We see former President Clinton was somewhat cared about Israel, but not enough. And, and Bush the same. He claimed to be for Israel. But in reality, they were both wanting to split the land of Israel. 
And now Obama definitely could care less about Israel and there to split the land as well. So none of them, pot can't call kettle black whatsoever. They're all guilty in this party here. All right, so going on, verse... Um, Verse 13, woe unto them, for they have fled from me, destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. Now notice, God says, I have redeemed them. What does he mean by this? You see, Ephraim, or in some cases, people say that the United States is the lost house of Israel there. It is true. Many of the tribes of Israel ended up in the United States. And yes, God redeemed them. He allowed the gospel of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to go to the United States. He allowed an outpouring of the Spirit. And God redeemed Israel, redeemed the house of Israel, those that were dwelling in the United States, and has allowed them to see the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ. But notice what he says there. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. Because the government rose up, and not only the government, even the churches here have spoken lies against God and against his word. All right, so let's see what he says here uh, as we move on. Uh, he says in verse 14, And they have not cried unto me with their heart when they howled upon their beds. They assembled themselves for corn and wine, and they rebelled against me. You see, what is it? Ministers have assembled together only for to get a dollar, only to make sure that they have plenty of corn and wine, so to speak. But that is the only thing that they do it for. And they re rebelled against God. Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. Now that's the that's what's sad. God blessed the United States because there were presidents that stood for Israel, like former President Nixon, when Golda Meir sent him, called him in the middle of the night and said, if you don't come to Israel's aid, I don't know what will happen. And President uh, uh, Nixon said he remembered the words of his mother who said that the time will come, you will be in a place of power. She was a praying woman. You'll be in a place of power where you can help Israel. And don't forget them when that day comes. He said he heard his mother's ears back in his voice as Golda Meir talked to him. And it was the largest arms shipment the world ever seen overnight to Israel. And it was a, uh, one of the main turning points in the war of Israel's survival. So we see here, though, God says here, you know, that, that when they howled upon their beds and assembled, or verse uh, 15, though I have bound and strengthened their arms, in other words, he strengthened them as a nation, yet you, you do imagine mischief against me. Because why? Now the current administration is willing to go against Israel. And they're definitely going to do it, especially after we see the little the, the, the near-death experience of little brother Nathan there. Somebody sent me a message, isn't that interesting, that David, the prophet to David, was Nathan as well. And the coming of the Mashiach, the son of David, uh, also now we have a little young man there. The young men shall see uh, dream, dream, or excuse me, the old man will dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. So whether it's a vision or whether it's near death, whichever one it is, Nonetheless, he has prophesied like the prophet Nathan. Um, anyway, so we move on. Verse 16, they return, but not uh, uh, to the most high. They are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword. See, the princes shall fall by the sword. And, and uh, for the rage of their tongue, this shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. That's amazing, isn't it? For, for, notice what he says there. For the rage of their tongue. That's what politicians do. They rage with their mouth. They got a lot to say, but they normally can never back up what they say or they don't never do what they say. Uh, or in this case here, as we see Donald Trump right now, he puts all the blame on Israel and stands for the Palestinians. And then he turns around with the other side of his mouth and speaks against the whole entire Arabic world. Just amazing. Uh, we go into chapter 8. Though it says, set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Look how God actually speaks about the United States here. Come as an eagle. Why? Because he flies into Syria with his war planes. And yes, he comes in. And of course, the, the national uh, bird for the United States is an eagle. And uh, so he comes in. But he says, you've transgressed against my law. You see? 
And, and what's funny, even though that, uh, well, I better hold back on that. So many people get angry. They don't even know how to handle the whole word of God the way it should be spoken. Let me tell you something. Uh, they have rejected the Ten Commandments in this country here. You know, there was actually really 12 if you want to look at it, because when Moses was given the Ten, he had two ordinances to go with it, which is the same thing as a commandment of God. And that's what's interesting because in the gloss gospel, Yeshua comes back and he gives 12 commandments. And he says, this is the what Moses gave originally. And he says, it's what was given to Enoch. It's what was given to Adam and Eve. It is an eternal commandments of God. And no, there has to be no more added to it whatsoever. All right, so we move on down here. Israel shall cry unto me, my God, we know thee. See what's going to happen? Why? Because it, the United States is going to turn on Israel. Because God said all the nations are coming against Israel. Is that right? So he says right here, Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. See, uh, Israel's done the same thing. Why? Because the politicians in Israel, they're not seeking God. They're seeking after worldly gain. They're seeking it. They went out and married the Roman Catholic Church and brought Jezebel back in the country again. Israel has also gone against God as well when they should have their faces to the wall seeking God. But it does say, though, that they will turn and they'll cry out to God. All right, verse 4. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, and they have they may, may be cut off. See, you put Prime Minister Netanyahu in there, and you anointed him and call him a king of Israel, but it's not God's doing, you see. It's not God's doing. That's why Micah's prophecy says, they will, say, will ask the question, is there no king in thee? Has thy counselor perished? Yes, you killed your counselor, Yeshua the Messiah. And the king, Prime Minister Netanyahu, is not going to deliver you out of the hand of your enemy. That is a fact. We know that to be so. All right, so he goes on and he says in verse 5, they, Thy calf, O Samaria, hath cast thee off. Mine anger is kindled against them. How long will it be ere they attained to innocency? See, your calf. You know, they talk about the calf, the, 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 the red heifer that they brought back to Temple Institute and they got it in a place where nobody knows. Well, I think the Bible just identified where you've got that calf hidden at. You got it over there in Samaria somewhere to where nobody can really see it. So God knows where the calf is and he says, your calf ain't going to do you no good. Thy calf, O Samaria, hath cast thee off. Mine anger is kindled against them. Why? Because you're going to try to go back and offer burnt sacrifice again when Yeshua come and did away with it? What is wrong, my friends? There's something wrong because God has clearly said when Yeshua come, He said, if you knew what this mean, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. He said, then you would not have convicted the innocent. See, you wouldn't have condemned the guiltless, that, that little creature that didn't never do anything wrong. Let's move on down here as well. So he says, verse 6, For from Israel was it also the workmen made it. Therefore it is not God, but the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. See, you bring out that calf again. Remember it says in, in the uh, New Testament, I believe it was Paul that wrote, they, they, they sacrificed unto their God Molech, 40 years in the wilderness. And that started from the time that they put that golden calf up. That's not what God wanted. You know, I was talking, I sent a message the other day uh, to, uh, to a good friend of mine there. The, um, uh, he is the, he's actually the writer there. He written, he, he's written several books there. He's an archaeologist and, and, um, and, and, and Egyptologist. David Roll, and David is just a remarkable Egyptologist there. And I asked him about uh, bulls and the sacrificial animals did Egypt, uh, you know, because some one person tried to say to me that Egypt never sacrificed animals. And David wrote me back. He said, yes, he said that was the main thing they sacrificed was the bull. He said, was interesting though, in, in Egypt's history, they never sacrificed lambs or goats. It was only the bulls. And so that's what's interesting. See, it's not, it's not according to what God's desire is. God is not wanting a temple set up. It's supposed to be a house of prayer. And Yeshua said in his day, but you've made it into a den of thieves. See, if you look at that in the pure translation, you've made it into a house of butchery. See, oh my gosh, friends. Look at this word of God here. It's incredible here. So he says, anyway, 
For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk, the bud shall yield no meal. If so it be yielded, the stranger shall swallow it up. There's a promise. I wish I'd have looked it up beforehand for you, what God will do. If you, if, if, you, if you keep His commandments, there's a blessing in His Word that says that your, your crops will be bountiful. It says in there that your fruit trees will produce abundantly. But go against His Word, and He says, I'll dry them all up. All right, Israel is swallowed up now. Shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure? For they are gone up to Assyria, a wild ass alone by himself. Ephraim hath hired lovers. See, what did they do? They went up. And, and see, Israel's doing the same thing. They're going in there and bombing in Syria too. And what did the United States do? They have hired in lovers, the NATO allies, Germany, and all the rest of them there. See, they're doing the exact same thing. All right, for they are gone up to Assyria, a wild ass alone by himself. Ephraim have hired lovers, yea, though they have hired among the nations. Now will I gather them, and they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes there. So, so just tell, tell, tell them there, thank you so kindly there, what you did there for the burden of the king of princes there. By the way, you know who that king of princes is? The Pope of Rome that talked you into doing all of this. It's the Pope of Rome that sent you in there to take Israel for his own greedy sake. So you're going to suffer a little bit because of the king of princes. As Yeshua says in the lost gospel there, he said you made a God who is not a God and you worship him as if he was God. It sounds pretty familiar from the Old Testament, doesn't it? Satan be, uh, or no, that's even from, I think it's Thessalonians, if I'm not mistaken. Paul says it. He says there's one that, that, that Satan wanted to be worshipped as if he were God, sitting in the temple of God and exalting himself above all that is called God. And that's exactly what the Pope of Rome actually does, friends. For Israel, now let's go on down. Uh, excuse me, but I'm sorry, verse 13 or verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted it as a strange thing. Oh my gosh. I'm going to back up. I think it's, no, I'm sorry. We should have been in verse 11. Because Ephraim hath made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him to sin. Altars? What do you do on an altar? Well, you know what they do. They burn. They, they kill and slaughter animals and kill them and, and burn them on the altar. Now, he says Ephraim's done it. That's the United States. He says, I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. Yes, sir. You know, it was found, the discovery of the lost gospels and where Yeshua spoke about the 12 commandments of the humane law of God. The Americans, uh, when it was taken there, and of course it's in the British Museum, even found in the 1800s in St. Uh, Mary's uh, uh, Monastery in, in the Sinai Peninsula was one of the oldest known, even older than the one that I always talked about, the oldest known uh, copy of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and scholars have been debating it because why? Just like the lost gospels that was found in, in Tibet and some of the lost gospels that were found in Egypt, it also stated in this writing here, here that Yeshua was for the, the humaneness of animals and came to stop the killing and innocent slaughter of animals. They didn't change it. What an amazing thing to find out, friends. And you can look it up online. It's there. I've read it. I, I want to find an actual copy. It's just amazing to see that. And then, and from that, the scholars have seen just how much has been changed of what we have today. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, also, they did not have anywhere where Yeshua multiplied fish. It was something that was later added. And this is actually Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, speaking of John... Keep in mind when I say that they have rejected the commandment of the Lord here, as he said, and counted it as a strange thing. See, what does he say? Verse 12, I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. And the government, even if you looked at the canon of today, the government doesn't want anything to do with the Bible. They count it as a strange thing, see? But the holy law that God had there, it was given to them and they count it as a strange thing. Want nothing to do with it says, they sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offering. And God said, let it be the broken and contrite spirit. Let it be the sacrifice of praise with your lips. 
That's what was supposed to be done since Yeshua came and died on, on the cross. It was to be the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. But he says, you've sacrificed flesh for the sacrifices of mine offering and eat it. But the Lord accepted them not. Now will he remember them. Not now will excuse me, he will remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. For Israel hath forgotten his maker and buildeth temples. See, actually, if you look at that, if you translate it right, buildeth his temple. See? And, and what does he say here? And Judah hath multiplied fenced cities, but I will send a fire upon his cities, and it shall devour the palaces thereof. Friends, let me tell you something. That's also a prophecy letting us know they're going to build the temple. And from what I hear, it won't take them long. So, friends, we're, uh, we're at the precipice of seeing more prophecies fulfilled. As we just count, just kind of recapping here, just paraphrasing some of this here, Ephraim is a type of the United States. She's gone up like a, like a wild ass, as he said, and she's hired lovers from the nations, the NATO allies, at the, at the, at the hand of the king of prince, princes there, and that's the Pope of Rome. And they've gone in there. God says, I'll take like a net and bring down the birds. God's going to bring down the warplanes that they've gone in there with. And I don't know what's going to cause it. Is it going to be a fight between Russia and the United States? Who knows what's going to happen, friends? But we do know that these, there's going to be a lot of fighting in this area here. And yet he's come against Israel. Come against Israel. Oh, my gosh, my friends, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Praise be the God, friends. Uh, they, we're living in an exciting times, and I am just really excited, you know, and Anyway, let's close in this particular broadcast is more in the prophetic realm than it is in the actual news that is happening. Uh, so, uh, but I trust it's still a blessing because we see what's happening in and around Israel and Syria. We see what Israel's doing. Israel's going to cry out for her Messiah. God is going to deliver her, but it's going to be through some major birth pains. What Micah says, he says, if I bring it forth, the, the birth, he says, how shall I bring it forth and not bring it to pass? Okay, friends, so it's got to happen. And it's a very tough time, friends. I know it is. Pray for Israel. Pray for, pray for the children of God around the world, everywhere that God will deliver. Open eyes to get people to see what the Word of God says for this day, friends. We are in a serious, serious, serious hour, friends. It's very serious. And the only way is through the deliverance of Yeshua. He's got to come and redeem us. And we must be ready. We must believe his word and stand with his word. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Those of you that have been praying for my wife to give you a little update. Uh, she's starting to get some of the motion back in her arm. Uh, uh, the pain has subsided somewhat. Uh, we will be going, she did the MRI, we're going to the doctor tomorrow to see what has actually happened in her arm. So I just thank you for your prayers and, and, and we've, many of you have sent different ideas to us that we could do. Some of those we've actually enacted and, and of course my wife being a natural, um, I don't, she don't like me saying doctor, she's not a naturopath doctor, but she did study, uh, was studying for her doctorate degree, but it, the college closed and didn't complete that part, but she understands a lot of these. So these things do work. DMSO, a topical, uh, high doses of vitamin C really reduces inflammation, and of course the mercy of God above all. So we thank you guys for praying for us and being there for us. God bless you. We love you. Also, too, one other thought, just in case, those of you that watch that have limited internet space to be able to, to listen to the broadcast here, we are now loading our Israeli news on IsraeliNewsLive.org in podcast format. Sister Torres transcribes for us, and as the transcript comes up, we will attach it to that same particular article there that has the, the podcast there. So if you don't have the ability to, to watch, you can listen to it on podcast on IsraeliNewsLive.org. Shalom and God bless you.